Okay, I'm going to begin by a confession. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my confession is that I see you as, as in the lineage of Isadora. Oh, okay. Which is not bad company. Not at all. Okay. And I love Isadora. I do too. And, and the, the reason that I say that is that she, in taking off the tutu, in, in taking off the ballet slippers, in putting her foot on the earth, mm -hmm. and that she was part of a social upheaval mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. that her dance expressed that. In mm -hmm. other words, it was the, the mm -hmm. zeitgeist of the time that we were seeing in relation to the mm -hmm. enormity of what she what she was representing. Mm -hmm. And what it was so powerful to me is she was doing it through the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That the statement of, mm -hmm. of, of the class system, of, of being more connected to the earth, of the, all of that and the social revolution at the time, it, to me, it was dazzling. And I say to myself, well, what if somebody had interviewed Isadora? Mm -hmm. And so I decided to Isadora <laughs> to interview <laughs> you <laughs> because I see you in that lineage. And, and what is propelling me is the piece I saw, first of all, of the nudity that, uh -huh. you, that you have done, uh -huh. which is in itself changes the world. I mean, at every level that you have done that. Uh -huh. And the, um, the social consciousness that is part of your work uh -huh. I mean, of the way that you have brought cities into into dance and races into dance, and the you know, and you're you know in the hall of dance brilliance, you're right there with Isadora. Thank you. So. I am. Uh, I, I, I would like to start in many different places. So one of the places I'd like to start is with parades and changes, which oh, I, like I think it. is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I'm Thank tough. Mm -hmm. I'm tough. Yeah. And Dancers are tough with each other. I'm tough. Okay, because I expect to have an experience when I go and see mm -hmm. something and not a private world. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say that I was talking to a friend the other day, and she was... Um, asking me about parades and changes, and I said it is not cat categorizable. Mm -hmm. I said you can't put it into any recognizable niche. Mm -hmm. I said it's unique. It's it has its own brilliance, its own milieu. It's not like anything. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to begin, and, and particularly the dressing and the undressing mm -hmm. is just, and the, the scene with the paper, the brown wrapping paper, I mean, it's stunning. And anyway, I'd like to begin with that. Okay. If that's good with you. And so can you take us through, you know, mm -hmm. the, the conceptual of it, the working with the composer? Uh, it's really... Um exciting for me to hear you say all this because nobody has said this before. Uh, nobody has mentioned Isadora Duncan and uh, having anything to do with the tradition. And I, re I, I remember when I first moved here to uh, the Bay Area, I remember that Isadora Duncan said that the next dancer would come from here. Wow. And I always said to myself, oh, I would like to be in her tradition. Well, you so you're the first person who's mentioned that. Uh, uh, th there are so many things to say about parades and changes, mm -hmm. so many influences. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'll go back to the maybe perhaps the first influence. My husband Lawrence was a, a student at Harvard University when uh, the Bauhaus people were had mm. just come from uh, escaping Nazi Germany. And uh, Gropius, who had been the director of the Bauhaus, was the director of the department that Larry was in. Mm. And the word Bauhaus means workshop. Mm -hmm. And that's where I got the idea of workshop. And the mm -hmm. idea of the workshop was a, a interchange between different medias. Mm 
Mm. And that's what the was very special about the Bauhaus, how they had artists and musicians, and even Fritz Perls mm. was connected to the Bauhaus. So when I came out here, there were, there were oh, maybe two or three dance companies, period. Now there are 600. But uh, I couldn't find uh, uh, the stimulus of the, the dance culture here. It just didn't really exist. Mm -hmm. as because I had been in New York where it was just the opposite. It was almost smothering. And um, so it just seemed to happen naturally that I had this place, I had a space for people to gather. And before I knew it, James Broughton, the poet, and Morton Sabotnik and the Tate Music Center with, all, with Pauline Olivares and mm -hmm. all of the young uh, experimental composers and Actors Workshop, which was uh, also bringing us things like uh, Ionesco and mm -hmm. uh, Beckett. And there was just a great kind of surge of experimentation from all the different fields. And somehow or other, even architects, mm. and somehow or other, we gathered as a workshop and we began collaborating. Uh, my artistic director was a painter. Mm. Uh, so Parades and Changes evolved as my first real collaborative work. Mm. And it stretched my imagination. It stretched my uh, sense of possibilities of what dance could be. Mm -hmm. And I, I was at a point where I had left New York. Uh, I felt very isolated here at the beginning. Then there was this uh, anti, anti uh, festival mm. that was organized by Rothschild, mm -hmm. and all the New York dancers were presenting at this festival. And Martha had come here, and she had seen something I did, and she invited me to, to appear at that festival. This Martha is, is Martha Graham. Martha Graham. Yeah. This, Martha, is kind of she's round, always Martha. this is kind of a roundabout <laughs> way of, of going back to Parades and Changes. But it's important because uh, it, it really changed my life being a participant at that festival because. I hated it. You hated the festival? I hated it. Why? Because the New York the, the, people? Well, I, you know, I'd been out here long enough to have shed some of my um, opinions and was already beginning to search. And what I saw, because uh, I, I went to every performance for two solid weeks, what I saw was that everybody in Martha Graham's group look like Martha Graham. Right, absolutely. Everybody in Doris Humphrey's group did, you know, fall and recovery, right. Martha Graham contraction and release, right. Hanya Holmes sort of floating out in space. Right. And, Jose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and it was very offensive to me. Yeah. I felt, this is a human. Right. But it's all right for Martha. I mean, for what she wanted to achieve, she needed to have trained people who could support her in her style. Mm -hmm. But it was a style of movement that was very uh, idiosyncratic. And I was here long enough to be searching for something different. Yeah. yeah. In a way, philosophically, it wasn't really any different than ballet. Correct. Philosophically. Yes. The difference is that instead of wearing toe shoes, you had bare feet. Instead mm -hmm. of having tutus, you had long jersey dresses. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't aware of that when I was in New York. Right. It was just swallowed up by the theatrical scene there. Yeah. But when I came here and w w living in the midst of nature and being close to the vital forces of nature and searching, n knowing that I couldn't replicate what was happening in New York, uh, I was searching for a new vision. Mm. And that helped me actually it helped me because when I came back, I knew I did not want to uh, teach that way mm -hmm. and I didn't want to experience myself that way and that I had an opportunity to work with wonderful artists that could enrich my uh, vision about art and dance. So it was negative on one level but very positive on another. So gathering together these young experimental avant-garde artists from different medias was just so stimulating and had the support of my husband as well, 
who was very supportive and um, was working side by side with me. So getting back to Parades and Changes, Parades and Changes was the result of five years of expo exploration. Mm. And Larry helped me develop a score. We stopped using the word choreography mm -hmm. because I associated it with somebody who has an idea preconceived already, mm -hmm. and then everybody else conforms to that idea. Mm -hmm. I wanted something more like nature. I wanted mm -hmm. something, and I didn't know what it was, but I wanted something that was flexible, that was creative, that changed with the seasons, with the day, with the people. And uh, Larry helped me uh, uh, define another way of creating together, which he called the RSVP cycle.